Colonel George Eprite gave the property to Texas A&M, and then I, I bought it from Texas A&M. Pete Dwyer calls himself a lover, not a fighter. I don't like the environmental battles, so we've come out here and we've now dealt with was the nation building that we had to do. By out here, he means Maynard. Dwyer lives in Steiner Ranch, but has spent millions of dollars buying up swaths of flat brush and small hills in this city northeast of Austin. He started after Austin decided to move its airport from where the Miller development is now to the old Bergstrom Air Force Base in 1994. As you drive around Maynard, you see signs with his name on seemingly every piece of open space. There wasn't very much infrastructure out here, so we've extended miles and miles of water line. We built wastewater treatment plants. We built roads. As Austin grew, Dwyer's land became more valuable. Maynard has seen an influx of people who can't afford homes in Austin. Jeanette Shelby has been selling homes in Maynard since 1981. I'm getting calls as soon as I list something on, and put it on the market. And if, if it's under 150000 I'm usually getting multiple offers now on properties. Most of the houses Shelby's clients buy are in winding suburban neighborhoods built on Dwyer's land. Some clients, though, move to Maynard in search of a little more acreage, which Shelby says is almost impossible to find these days. Why? It's either in a subdivision where it's smaller tracts or they're 100 acre tracts. And when I first got into real estate, some of these subdivisions, there were a lot of five acre tracts, but they're just not available anymore. Dwyer is hoping to target those home buyers who have a little more money to spend. One of his current projects called Wild Horse Ranch will be marketed to wealthy executives at nearby tech companies. He says he'd like for it to eventually be seen as Westlake Hills East. Maynard's growth has also meant more families with school-aged children. Over the past 10 years, Maynard ISD's student population has grown by 92%. A few years ago, Dwyer donated $3 million worth of his land to the district. A bond allocated the same amount for land purchasing to build new schools, so MISD was able to use those funds for other things. Great schools make for great home sales, and if you've got a great facility that's fun, the kids want to go to school. The first school built on his donated land was Shadow Glen Elementary, which opened at capacity in 2015. The next school will be Lagos Elementary, which was moved up a year after Shadow Glen opened so full. I don't think Pete's met anybody he doesn't like. He's just a really genuinely good guy, and I think he, his heart's in the right place about helping the district. But some longtime residents aren't entirely pro-development. Pete recently tried to help Blue Bonnet Electric Co-op convert an old house into a retail customer service building at the urging of the mayor of Maynor. It had sat vacant in Old Manor for years, but when he went in for the zoning case, he was met with opposition. There were like five or six old gray panther ladies, and they were like hitting me with their canes, and they were like, don't you do that to our neighborhood, because if you come in and you, you know, renovate that building and make it all uh, commercial and everything, then our property taxes can't, you know, they'll go up and we're on fixed incomes, and we can't afford that. Good intentions don't always end up a good project being. For now, Maynard is still a small town. The closest thing to a supermarket is Walmart, but there's a Panda Express, an AT&T store, and a Starbucks opening soon, all of which, Dwyer says, are good things for developers and homeowners. I don't know if you've heard about the, uh, you know, the Starbucks effect. It's proven now that property is more valuable immediately surrounding a Starbucks. And Dwyer says his land is always for sale. Just call the number you see on his signs all over town. For KLRU, I'm Allison Sanza.